And guess what? My portfolio is 50% vacant. And that's happening all over the world, except in Singapore, in India, and the Philippines. In India and Philippines, because of the because of the BPO sector. So I just want to remind everyone of the ICON 2023 happening this Saturday in SMORA. We've got 16 speakers, some of the best investor advisors you can ever get. And uh, it's going to run from 9 till 9 till Sala, I guess, basically, on Saturday. Hope to see you there. Hi everyone, we're back with a very, very special guest. Uh, you all know him as one of the geniuses in the Philippine property market. He's a CEO, founder of the Two Property Specialist, and he'll also be in Icon 2023 this Saturday at Samsung Hall. Uh, we have David Lee Chu back in the show. David, it's always an honor, a pleasure to have you. Oh no, thank you for having me, Marvin. It's really a privilege to be here in your show. I, I want to start everything off with, with this. Uh, when we when we were chatting um, in the midst of the pandemic, we were talking about uh, how how things were changing back then. But now we're, uh, as far as I see it, everything is open. Um, I want to start everything off from a broader question about how's the Philippine property market from a from a broader scope, uh, comparing it from 2019 before the pandemic in the midst of the pandemic and then to where we are right now as well. I'd like to start off by saying that everything has really been thrown at the Philippines now. Again, you know, high interest rates, uh, the threat of work from home and work from home and high interest rates have been ravaging property markets all over the world, except maybe in three places, Philippines, India, Singapore. So work from home, high interest rates, high inflation, COVID, lockdowns, what else? Uh, weather disturbances, earthquakes, all, all these things have really hit the Philippines. And despite that, the property market is gracefully performing well. It is graceful because uh, not everything in the property sector is perfect. For example, I think the middle middle market, yung mga 3 to 8 million, 10 million price range, they were hit very hard. Last year, in 2022, we saw the highest default rates in the industry. The default rates pre pre 2022 were dancing at around 26 percent to 35 percent somewhere there. Wow. And last year, it hit as high as 60, and it really shook the industry, the developers. But it was only isolated to the three to ten, three to eight million peso bracket, and the units above that and the units below that, for some reason, uh, naka recovers yung lower end of the market, and your upper end of the market just kept going. The upper end of the market just waited for better terms from developers, better pricing from developers. Well, they kept the price firm, if not higher. But they made it up by giving more payment stretch payment terms. And so I think in the last 18 months, you saw a massive recovery in the in the sales, sales take up uh, activity in, in the in the Philippines, all throughout the Philippines, all throughout the country. To the point where first quarter of this year, you see many developers announcing new projects and new CapEx commitments. So Ayala is launching uh, an incredible amount of products. They, they made that announcement early this year that they're going to launch an incredible amount of products. Uh, and then SM followed, Robinsons followed, Megaworld followed. And I think they, they, they see the confidence again. They have the confidence again that the market's ready to absorb more stock. They were shocked in 2022 with a high default rates but they seem to be successfully offloading that and finding solutions because otherwise they wouldn't be launching all these new projects if you look at the most aggressive of them all ayala land they opened 116 121 properties in anvaya last december two weeks all but six lots were sold 
and then uh, and then ano, at 25,000 square meter which to me makes it one of the cheapest properties you can ever buy in a master plan resort themed community and uh, you know that golf course there it's gorgeous beautiful um, the the way they keep the grounds the condominiums the projects it's, it's very 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 good so I'm you know and 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 they also launched um, a new phase in Lou Valley and again for three four six days wiped out uh, Carmona wiped out uh, you know, so the momentum is pretty solid. Uh, despite despite what's going on, uh, Ayala Dad in particular has been able to move quite a bit of inventory, even in the bleakest of times. So that's that's kudos to them, and more developers are following. From what you're saying, also we have we have it relatively segmented. You have the lower end and upper end that has been resilient. Um, I I want to zero in on what you mentioned also about about the middle the middle section the three to eight million portion um number one how how big do you see this in terms of percentage the overall our uh, real estate portfolio that we have and then um how did this impact also uh people who have been buying and also people who have been renting in this in this particular segment as well so rents were hit very hard so so in addition to interest rates and vacancies very high vacancies the the rents in this segment well the rents all over the market on the rest of the national space really came down some cities lost 50 60 70 percent of value in in terms of renta and rental value what you used to rent for 100,000 pesos now you're only renting for 30 40,000 pesos what you used to rent for 200,000 pesos you're probably renting it out uh, in 2022 for mga 90 or 70,000. So, gano'n kalaki yung bagsak. <clears throat> but ngayon, nag-recover na sila. From, from November, December of last year to today, those rents are moving very, very quickly back up. Like right now, so Pacific Plaza, you could have rented Pacific Plaza for 90,000 pesos in Bonifacio. 90,000 pesos a month. Now they're back at 250, 200, 250, and pre-pandemic they were at 300. So the malaba na ulit sila pa balik ng pre-pandemic levels. And despite the drop in rents, capital values continued to hold, if not climb. Going back to the middle middle market, that middle middle market is going to recover. It's it's actually recovering now because developers responded with even more flexible payment terms. And second, I guess renewed confidence because ano yun, it's stabilized the global markets and overseas Filipino workers are being deployed again, unlike before during the early days of the lockdown. And that's that's leading to more money being funneled into this economy. If we go back to your first question, how is the market going? And I said, it's gracefully performing. And it's doing so because of overseas remittances, all-time high, again, another record year for overseas remittances, another record year for job creation by the BPO sector. Okay? The, the, I sit on the board of the BPO uh, Association. I've just been re-elected for another term. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, and we had record hiring in 2021, 2022. Why? It's a validation that as the world goes into crisis, more jobs are created in the Philippines. And that makes the Philippines one of the few counter-cyclical markets. Ang sagap sa Pilipinas, especially now, to be honest. I mean, outside of Singapore, outside of India, uh, and Philippines, every other market in the world is getting hit that every other property market in the world is getting hit very badly by work from home and by high interest rates. You've heard of all these funds that that said, oh, my loan is maturing this year and from 2-3%, it's going up to 6-7-8% and they're holding on to $2 billion, $3 billion, $10 billion worth of debt. The guys, the proponents who are very big funds, 
very solid funds or saying you know what take it for close on it okay i dare you and they say talk to me when you come with more reasonable terms and guess what my portfolio is 50% vacant and that's happening all over the world except in singapore in india and the philippines in india and philippines because of the because of the bpo sector the bpo sector wants to keep employees in the office yes there's a tug of war between employees and employers right now and right now uh it used to be 90% work from home it's gone to 70% work from home today it's somewhere between 45 50% work from home i think by the end of this year it should be closer to 30% work from home 70% back in the office but the third reason is that the pump priming efforts of the government is really making making this felt in this economy because there is still consumption very high levels of consumption despite job loss global job loss high inflation high interest rates etc 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 we still have I was just in Green Hills uh, Sunday night and my god there's just so many people I was just in Mega Mall uh 3 months ago and my god this is uh, you don't think there's a crisis in the Philippines really when you visit these malls and um but the fourth and most exciting uh sorry b- before I do go number four I just want to expound on the pump priming effort so all the ayudas that the you know that the government and politicians gave out all the infrastructure projects that are being completed all the new launches all the permits the construction permits and there was a construction boom in 2021 and 2022 that was not noticed by the general public because they were all locked up right and they were also scared by covid but all that kind of just permeated through the entire country but the fourth most exciting thing marvin is all these very successful overseas filipinos that are coming back and saying what can we do here and they're not no they're not um they're not disorganized these are as filipino associations of broad like for example we hosted this group called uh, fire which is the filipino independent institutional real estate practitioners i don't know what experts or whatever I, I I pasta they are there are American Filipinos that have been very successful in corporate real estate and they made an association and they said balik tayo ng Pilipinas let's see what's going on there and they are bringing their friends and those friends are bringing their friends and galing what they and all, all the influence they have to kind of get the Philippines noticed And that's just one of many associations and many successful Filipino uh, entrepreneurs and professionals that are coming here to figure out what they can do here. And they have not been here for 20, 30 years. And for the first time, professionals are really genuinely thinking of retiring back in the Philippines. So I'm like, what? Are you sure? You want to yeah. give up? You don't give up your four seasons? You're- I mean, I have friends who have sold their houses to buy property here because they want to come back here. And they're not 70, 80, 90 years old. Uh, they are mid-50s, early 50s, late 40s. Okay. And they're going to transform this together with the for, uh, the overseas Filipino comes network, work ethic, expertise, uh, connections, capital, technology, and ideas so I, i'm i'm in the same way that the indians who who were discovered and were recruited to work in silicon valley in the early in the late 80s early 90s that then all these guys from india working in silicon valley went back to india and transformed basically much created the bpo industry tech industry in india today that same phenomenon is happening here in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. And then the fifth the fifth driver is tourism. Just keep going to YouTube and my god, so many foreigners of all languages promoting the Philippines and 
you know, from one bar to another that I go to, from one party to another that I go to, I meet so many foreigners who are here loving it, really loving it. I'm curious about what you mentioned about um, inflows coming from Filipinos uh, overseas. Um, you mentioned two things, Filipinos that are overseas that are still there, that are sending money here, and then the ones that are planning to move here and then uh, build something. For people watching this that want to grab insight on where this could probably flow, um, how do you think this would play out also? The more money they send I, over the next few years, uh, what type of properties or sectors related to property will benefit from all of this? I think the office sector will de definitely benefit from this. And they're not just moving into Manila. Huh? They're going to Iloilo, where they come from. They're going to Ilocos, where they come from. They're going to Bohol or Mindanao, where they come from. And uh, they are certainly going to benefit the the office sector. Although the scale of that is just a muna. But they're going to bring in new new ideas for residential. And the residential sector will really benefit from them. And and sumasabay doon yung amount of development all over the Philippines that are townships. You know, just 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 look at Ayala and Megworld, the two largest township creators in the Philippines today. Ayala and Megworld are building, I don't know how many townships, it's crazy. There are 160, 170 townships right now all over the Philippines. Yung Pilipino na lumaki sa probinsya ng, I don't know, uh, Talisay or uh, San Nicolas, Ilocos or, uh, I don't know, Baler, Aurora. And then they left 20 years ago. They've never been back here 20 years since. And then they go back to their home province and they say, oh my God, may ganito na pala dito sa bayan natin, sa barangay natin, sa kung saan kami lumaki. That just sparks this massive um, desire to kind of make a difference in that community. You're going to see that snowball. And before you know it, in three, five years, that's going to be very compelling. Hindi pa napapansin ng mga tao eh. You just see it in traffic in airlines, you see it in traffic in hotel bookings, you see it in restaurants, when you see the malls. But very soon, in just three, five years, when all these inspirations lead to action, lead to investment, lalabas yan in three or five years. And magugulat na yung mga tao how much, how much that's changing this country for the better.